This is one of our spirit schools, ministered by Gustave Leroux. Please enjoy it. Know that it will take you deeper, higher, and wider into Yahweh. Please subscribe and have a great day. Father, it's in this place, <clears throat> not in your leans, this place in the spirit realm, where we become one with you, where we enter into covenant with you, Father. That, that marriage covenant that we've been so misunderstood, but we're beginning to understand that we're stepping into you. You overshadow us with a covenant that is there to propel us, that <coughs> that baptism into the cloud of Moses. Understanding in marriage ketubah as the Ten Commandments. Stepping into an agreement with you as we covenant with Yod Hey Shen Vav Hey. Where you begin to overshadow us with your breath. You begin to overshadow us with your fire and your glory and your presence. We step into your name. And as I speak, I really want you to picture, I want you to find your, your imagination activated. And I want you to step into him. Step into Yod. Hey. Vav. Shen. Vav. Hey. Step into Yeshua. Step into Yod. Hey. Vav. Hey. Allow him to breathe his breath over you. We've done this exercise already. Keep engaging it. It's changed my life and I know it will change your life. It's finding yourself in him. Shifting into every area of who he is. Becoming one with him. Changing your DNA. Changing the structure of who you are. As you're conforming to his image. Father, we love you. We praise you. We absolutely worship and magnify you. You are an incredible, beautiful God. I ask tonight, Father, that you'll open up our hearts. I pray, Father, that you'll enhance every part of who we are. And we'll take every one of this room to a place that we have never been before. Deeper, higher, wider into you. Let's begin to understand what it means to be covered by you. What does it mean to walk in all of what you've made available for us to walk in? Let's begin to see you, Father. See the fullness of who you are, my King. We love you, my King. understand what it means to truly be one with you how it changes us how it changes you and I know our saying our understanding is well God cannot change yes you're right but in the beginning out of him then it went rampage rampant through the through his life until it returned to him now that we are returning to Him, there's a change that takes place in both of us. Yahweh is excited when we begin to grow sons and daughters, when we begin to understand who we truly, truly are. desire has always been for us to be one with him. In John 17 it says this, that they all may be one as thou, Father, art in me and I in you, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that you have sent us, for me, me. 
I in them, and you in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that you have sent me, and has loved them as you have loved me. Father has always wanted us to step into Him. Always wanted us to be in Yeshua. That's why we clothed in Him. That's why we dressed in Him. That's why we are seated in Him in heavenly places. That's why he's, he, he died on that cross so we can step into His resurrection and we can go where He is because through His blood we are cleansed. Through His blood, through that dimension that opened up, we get to operate through the veil. Father, tonight I pray for revelation as we eat of you and drink of you, my King. In the name of Yeshua. Amen. Wow, let it be light. How are you guys doing? Anybody like the light? <laughs> From pitch black to light, light. Well, I can see my old scars now. <laughs> yeah, I'm very excited about tonight. Uh, you know, I had, to be honest, I had probably had about five messages that I wanted to teach on my way here during the week, what I planned for tonight. Um, and when I got here, it's like everything just kind of shifted, everything changed. When I sat down to start just going through my notes, like a very old message I ministered to a very long time ago, but I need to do it again. And it's different this time because it's, it's out of different notes. But I really want to go back to the idea of eating of Him and drinking of Him, communion. And I want to understand what it truly does, not just in the natural, but also in the spiritual. The idea behind it is eternal life or everlasting life, not, not what we perceive it to be. It's not because I eat of Him and drink of Him, I'm going to go to heaven. It's to changing the DNA structure of who you are as a species into what it's supposed to be, if, if that makes any sense. And the Father is really uh, desiring for us to begin to understand what it means to eat of Him and drink of Him. We're not cannibals, not all of us. <laughs> we're, we're not vampires. Right? It's, it's not cannibalistic and it's not vampiristic. We're not eating and drinking physically off Him. In the natural, we're taking the bread. And in the natural, we're taking wine or juice. But it's what really happens in the spirit that is what changes us. But it has to happen in both worlds for the effect to truly take place. If that makes any sense to you. A couple of things I want to read quickly that we all probably read a million times. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Let's stop there. Let's go back to the very first section. In the beginning. I want to remind you of this scripture. The beginning here is not a chronological time. It's a statement saying that in the beginning, God. God is the beginning. And everything was in Him in the beginning. But there was no beginning. There was no, not the way we perceive it. See, this is a Hebraic mindset. Everything before he breathed it out into place. Wow. In John it says a very similar thing. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Now we understand the Word to be Yeshua, right? Amen. Jesus Christ. So if Jesus Christ is the Word, and the Word is God, was God, and will always be God, then we're beginning to understand that Jesus Christ is God in His full capacity. And amen would kind of help. This is not, this is not, this is not I want. <laughs> he was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through Him. And without Him, not even one thing uh, came into being that has come into being. Now, if I wrote that, I probably wouldn't have write, written it like that. Right, that sounds very complicated. <laughs> All things came into being through Him, and without Him, not even one thing came into being that had came into being. I don't know, I wouldn't have written it like that. But that's why I didn't write the Bible. <laughs> right. But I, really, I just want to get at the cross for us to understand that when I get to go in, 
when I become one with him, every dimension of who he is begins to melt over me. Now I'll say something kind of freaky, but if I had to accidentally step in lava, has anybody ever done that? <laughs> okay, thank God. <laughs> yeah, it, it would have been a myth. You would have been. It would have one-time trick. Yeah, one-time trick. You will never do it again. Uh, same as being really burned with, with, with boiling hot. It's really, it gets infused. Now, water is a different situation because it doesn't get infused into you. But um, if you had to step into lava, you are going to have this liquid metal or this liquid rock infuse into your being and you'll die. I remember if you, if you maybe it's happened to you before, you get accidentally get burnt with uh, plastic. Oh. Yeah. It kind of it gets infused into your skin and then you can't get it off. It's like extremely painful. This is kind of what this is like. No. Oh. <laughs> this is what he wants to do. Yeah. He wants to bring his fullness into all of who you are by infusing oh. who he is into you. <laughs> You know, we take a piece of bread and we eat it and we do it once a month and we understand this is the body. It's nice. It's a, it's a nip and a sip, right? We, we have the, the drink, whether it's uh, grape juice or whether it's just red juice or whether it's actual wine. It doesn't actually matter, but we just drink it and that's it. We get told that this is the body and this is the blood. One represents what we step into, the other one represents the covenant. But in reality, he makes a statement in the word where he says, do this in remembrance of me. Now, let me just remind you of something. I know that I'm not the only one, so I'm just saying it from where I am at. Yes. I wake up in the morning and the first thing I do is I'm in remembrance of him. I don't get to where I go in any form, in any fashion of my day without constantly being in remembrance of who he is. Right. It's like I'm always engaging with him. I'm always, even if I'm fighting what I do all day long. <laughs> it's by God's grace and mercy that I haven't killed one of them yet. I love them. They are incredible kids, but they sit on their ears and they listen with their butt. I don't know if you understand how kids work, but they, they, they don't have it right. They sit on their ears and they listen with their butt. It's really strange. I don't get it. <coughs> Did the same. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. I was Olympic. I was an Olympic child. Olympic. Absolutely incredible. The fact that I am alive is because of my angels. And they were constantly in war with my, in war with my mother and father's angels. <laughs> it wasn't that bad, but I think it might have been. <laughs> but it's only been, it's been eight, maybe eight, since I divided soul and spirit. This is how it's been. And it's not, you know, we, we get to in our Christian world, we go up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. And every time we're down, we're like, oh, well, this is ridiculous. This stuff's not working. And I'm fasting and I'm begging God for stuff and nothing's happening. And then all of a sudden something good happened and whoop, I'm back up again. Yeah. But when you're the right soul and spirit, there's something that should be happening in your life. Yeah. And that is a constant climb upwards. It's constant growth, constant changing. I'm aware of Him every day, all day long. And I say this, and I need you to understand. I'm not saying that I do not sin. But what I am saying is I cannot sin without knowing that I sinned. Amen. I'm constantly aware of His presence and His glory over me. If I make the wrong decision, right. His conviction is over me all the time. Now, it's not condemnation. Uh, I, I don't feel bad because the sin I find myself in is small portions of disobedience. Yes. Do this. Now that is not a good idea. That sounds like a really bad idea. I don't know who's talking to me, but I don't like it. <laughs> oh, oh you, don't, you, you don't do that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So, so it's not sin like what you would think. It's missing the mark. It's knowing what I should be doing, knowing, knowing where I should be going, but just kind of thinking, well, that's probably not the best idea, knowing that it's God wanting me to go there, just setting it aside for one more day. Yeah. Aware of His presence. Now, I am no longer taking communion with a communion cup. First of all, I came to the realization that those things are disgusting. <laughs> it's not just me. First of all, the little piece of bread, nobody knows whether it, what, what it actually is. <laughs> I think it could be cardboard. 
<laughs> the wine, eventually all that juice in there, I don't know how long it's been in there. It's like a tinky. The Twinkie, yeah. Tinky, it doesn't have an expiry date. 20 years. It's just weird. I, I mean, I don't even, I, I stopped taking it because I, every time I eat something, and I've noticed that's basically all day long. Right? But every time I eat something, every time I drink something, whether it's water, whether it's juice, no matter what it is, whenever I'm, I'm engaging into supplying a nutrition to my body, I'm engaging with Yahweh, I'm becoming one with Him. I'm constantly in communion with Him. And I want this to become a, an awareness in your life. Because we have to understand that out of this place of constant intimacy with Him, constant, beco constantly becoming one, <coughs> constantly finding yourself, eating of Him, drinking of Him, will enhance your physical life. It changes who you are in your DNA. In John 6 it says this, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink His blood, you have no life in yourself. Right. Now you might say, well, I've eaten, I've eaten it once. <coughs> well, let me just make it very clear to you, this is not something you do only once. Right. You're born from above experience. This is something you have to do consistently because your DNA has to change. The life that comes into the fullness of your body as you eat of Him and drink of Him changes who you are. And I want to remind you of it because we forget this is not your original intent. This is not your first estate. Okay, this is a record of the DNA of a sinner. Well, I'm no longer a sinner. Yes, I understand, but if you were no longer a sinner, you would have had a glorified body. So we're in the process of becoming that this body has that it's not supposed to have. Because His desire has always been for us to have everlasting life. Now everlasting life is different than eternal life. Everlasting life is immortality. Right? Not, not immortal. <laughs> no, immortal. Oh, wait. Never mind. I'm saying it wrong. And, I, and when I want to say it right, I'm saying it wrong. When I want to say it wrong, I say it right. Okay. But it's his desire for us to understand that my body has to change. Because at the moment, when, my, when I wake up the next morning, I'm a day older. Every single day. Because I don't understand the capacity of my authority. I don't understand who I am. The Father has never designed the sun and the moon to be over me. We go right back to Genesis 1, 26. He makes it very clear that we are to govern creation. When the sun and the moon is over me, there is no governance from my side. They are governing my day. They are governing my night. And that's why we get cancer. That's why we get sickness. That's why we get to understand who we are. And we step out from under that bondage. Even in my flesh, I begin to shift. That's why I eat of him and drink of him. Now, I want to remind you of a couple of things. But let me just continue reading. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. And I will raise, up, um, raise him up on the last day, for my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me, and I in him. Amen. That's a realm that the Father is calling a company of people to. Yeah. Him. But how many of you understand, once you become a spirit being, you physically step into him. Yeah. And you physically begin to live in him. You physically experience that glory and fullness washing and breathing over you on a daily, continuous basis. That's what He's calling us to. Not quoting a scripture and believing what it says. And that sounds nice, but that's not where He wants us to be. It goes to a higher place. Are you guys good? As the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so He who eats me, He also will live because of me of heaven, uh, not as the fathers ate and, and died, he who eats this bread will live forever. I eat your flesh and drink your blood so that I will not die but live forever. Now this is a mindset that has to change in you. Do you guys understand what I'm trying to say? Because you still want to die. Now, you might not consciously want to die because consciously we don't want to die. 
consciously everyone is scared of death because we understand with death comes some kind of connotation to pain, <laughs> suffering or something that's not nice. Unless you just fall asleep in your fall asleep in your sleep. Yeah. <laughs> but that doesn't really that's not the conscious thought. But he wants us to begin to believe that when I eat of him and drink of him, things change in me. Yes. When I eat of him, I engage in the DNA of God. I embrace in the transformation power of the body and the blood of Yeshua. A couple of things, and every time you take communion, we're going to go into the spirit after this meeting, and we're going to go and eat of him and drink of him. Yes. And I want you to have this in mind. When I take communion, I engage in the record containing the light. I want you to see that dimension of who Yahweh is. Because when I take light into who I am, I will become that light. That's an exciting, powerful place to be. Eating of Him, drinking of Him. Mm -hmm. To the sound and the frequency of God's image for transfiguration. Now let me just remind you what happens in transfiguration. It's not just me eating and drinking of Him that get me transfigured. I'm engaging with, as I step into Him, as I have Him overshadow me, as I become one with Him, what does He do? He entitles me to walk with the seven spirits. Yes. It's the seven spirits that brings me to that full enlightenment. It's that seven spirits that teaches me who I am in Him. That position in the fullness of Yahweh Valhe. And we understand. When I spin them at 2,800 reps per minute, I will have a white light. The seven colors turn white. And that's the idea of engaging with the seven spirits. You become that engagement of light. I love that. I, I don't know about you guys, but that's incredible. Yes, indeed. As I eat of him and drink of him, I embrace the record of the dimensions of the kingdom released in my body by the DNA of God. Woo! I embrace the record of the dimensions of the kingdom released in my body by the DNA of God. I want to remind you that as you eat of Him and drink of Him, there is not just gates and doorways, there is dimensions and realms that opens up for you as a son and daughter to go into, to explore all of who He is. Not just in what we perceive Him to be in the Word, in the Bible. But to exceed that and to go into every other dimension of the word. To have him open up all our perceptions and understanding regarding who he is as we eat of him and drink of him. I like that. Hallelujah. As I eat of him and drink of him, I engage that DNA record and apply it to my bones for health and wholeness. To redeem all negative... <clears throat> All negative activity in my body. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Any sickness, any disease. As I eat of Him, as I drink of Him, as I take that covenant uh, wine, as I take that body of who He was, what He did, and the function that He had in the earth, as I step into it, my being begins to align with it. Yeah. And remind yourself, it's not just me eating of Him, drinking of Him, it's stepping into a frequency. A higher frequency that I can have in, the, in creation. When I step into Yahweh, Yahweh, the frequency that He overshadows me with brings alignment to all of who I am. It opens me up. Yes, it does. Hallelujah. It speaks to my marrow and command it to be a new source of blood. Yes. That my barrow, my marrow, um, and command it. To will transform the DNA of my cells so that I can be transfigured and live forever. Yes. But we need to understand something. I know that it's, it's in our DNA to want to die. So when I say this stuff, it sounds like, well, why don't you want to die? What is wrong with you? Everybody's going to die. No matter who you are, no matter what you are, you're guaranteed of a couple of things in life. You have to do number one, you have to do number two, and you're going to die. <laughs> but maybe one more thing, you have to be born. It's just some things that you have to do. If you don't eat, you're going to die. That's just one of those things. L right? Right. Because if I have already had a death, how many of you understand? If I've already had a death, how many of you have already had a death? Yep. 
<coughs> then why do we so desperately want another death? The Bible talks about this. It says that Hades and death will be thrown in a lake of fire. So death is not your portion unless you want it. Only reason for your feet. Defeat it. Now, as I've said this many times, he's defeated, he's got no feet. He's disarmed, he's got no arms. He's 6,000 years old, and that's not even an accurate form of description or in any way, fashion, or form. But they say that uh, he's been um, in this realm for plus minus 6,000 years, and it's probably not even true. But if it is, it's good. If it's not, it's been longer, so it makes my point even more active. So he's a, a, a literally a worm. No life in him because he dies daily. He's 6,000 years old, and we're afraid of him. And the Bible tells us that one day when we see who it is that caused all this havoc around us, all the destruction, right. all the murder, all this stuff, we were going to look at it and go, what? <laughs> and was that him? The Mickey Mouse pervert? And you know what? We need to begin to understand who we are. Because he has no ground in our lives because we eat of Yahweh. We eat of Yeshua. We drink of him. We're in covenant with him. Our DNA is changing. The cells. I apply the frequency of God's DNA to transform me into the image of Yeshua. Yes. Yes. Now, you have to remind yourself, when I, as I've said this many times, when, when, the, it, when the disciples started speaking in tongues, so there's a hundred of them in, in the upper room and they start speaking in a language they didn't learn. And we understand now that it wasn't what we speak. They didn't go, all could understand what they were saying and were amazed yes. that they could understand it. How could these people speak our language? Now, in the same breath, there were some that spoke in a language that they thought, these guys are drunk. What are they doing? Why are they speaking so weird? We're beginning to understand that the evidence of being filled with Holy Spirit is speaking in an other tongue. Now, that other tongue is not the, one of the nine gifts. Right, we've got two gifts within the nine gifts. One is an interpretation of tongues, and the one is speaking in other tongues. And we're beginning to understand it because the interpretation of tongues is when I speak in tongues, and someone uh, can listen to that frequency and align it to something Yahweh wants to bring or progress into the meeting, and it can bring an interpretation through the frequency I release. The other one is someone speaks in Chinese, all of a sudden, and they couldn't speak Chinese before, and it was just usually it's just once off as the spirit utters. Yes. Can you imagine? Okay, that wasn't really Chinese, but that's kind of where it goes to. And then, then there's another level. Of my understanding of this confused with the frequency, although that's what that's what speaking is, right? That's what language is, the frequency. <coughs> so I begin to speak in a frequency of Yahweh through my spirit man and things starts opening up. Yeah. That's why Paul says, never cease to pray. <coughs> and he's talking about praying tongues, right? Why? Because it frequently align you with the DNA of Yahweh. Yes. It's becoming one of them. It's that gate staying open and I him drink of him. Exciting, right? I command the I command that, that, that every genetic record to be transformed and my DNA to be recalibrated yes. into alignment yes. with my eternal image. Yes. Amen. What's my eternal image? The fullness of Yeshua. <laughs> I love this. You know, every time I eat of him, I want to I, I basis just... To understand what I'm, what I'm doing when I eat of him and drink of him. Right. It doesn't matter what you eat. Right. Yeah, well, it has to be bread. No, it doesn't have to be bread. It has to be wine. You just want wine. Right. I can't have communion without wine. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard people say that. Okay. I have communion with, with protein shake. Now, the good thing about having communion with a protein <laughs> shake is you don't need to eat anything. 
It's, it's both in one. <laughs> As I eat of him and drink of him, I apply the blood of Jesus to all iniquities in my genetic patterns. To be cleansed, to be aligned, for my being to fall back into the order that it was originally meant to be in. That changes who I am. <coughs> I choose to bear the record, my eternal image conformed to, uh, to be in the likeness of my father and brother in heaven and to be transfigured to radiate their glory. The breath of God was, will be breathed into your life. The transformation or the transforming you into a living being joined to the Lord and one spirit with Him is understanding what happens when you eat of Him and drink of Him. It's more than just taking a lip and a sip. It's more than just taking a piece of bread. It's you stepping in and becoming, becoming one with Him. I absolutely enjoy this so much. As I eat of him and drink of him, I speak creative words to my DNA to release the supernatural abilities of God. Um, I trigger the ability to see and move in the supernatural realm of his kingdom. Now, I want to remind you, this is the phase that I go into where the Father starts activating my, my, my sight. He starts activating my hearing. He starts activating my revelations and insights. I begin to perceive these mysteries. I begin to perceive his secrets. And I understand the things that I engage with. Yes, yes. Because I'm going into a, a realm where my DNA is changed into what it's supposed to be. Okay. Because let me remind you something. And I, I heard a, a young man preach on this one day. He says, when I draw a stick man and his wife. That's two-dimensional. Now, if they were to come alive in this two-dimensional picture and I accidentally drop my pen on that page, they have absolutely no record in their DNA to understand what that is. Uh, for what they see is a line. But they don't understand the third dimension. If I put a, a, a round ball on that table and they look at it, all they see is a little dot. Then for them to step out of that dimension into the third dimension to see what the pencil really looks like, they will have no record for it. They'll be all freaked out. But if I can transform them from a two-dimensional being into a three-dimensional being and show them the pencil and the ball, they will have an understanding of what it is. Yeah. Oh, yes, I know that's a dot. Yes, I know that's a straight line. Right? It'll, it'll change the way they perceive things because I've changed their DNA. So what happens when you become a spirit being is you step in through the third dimension into the fourth dimension. Yes. And you have your DNA as it changes by eating him and drinking him, you begin to perceive the things you see on the other side. Yes. Ooh. Amen. I know that, I'm start, that, I, that I start preaching when I start stretching out my last words. Yes. <laughs> In the name of God! <laughs> okay, Jesus help me. Calm me down. Amen. I, tr <laughs> I trigger the ability to transform matter <clears throat> and control light and sound. This last one takes... Hebrews 11 verse 1 into full fruition. Because if you have to read, if you have to take a, a, a Hebrews uh, 11 1, faith is something of things, uh, hope for the evidence of things not seen. If I put that in a New Age Bible, oh, the New Age other than Bible, okay, fine. The New Age book. It will say, it will say this. Trigger the ability to transform matter and control light and sound. Because what I'm really doing, according to that scripture, is I'm taking what's not there, but what, what I see in the spirit, right. which is a spiritual matter, and I transform it into a physical matter. That's right. Yes, yes, thank you. But we understand that, that, that magic and magicians was very rampant in the Old Testament and the New Testament. But we don't want to read it like that, so we say it was the three wise men. But it was magi, or magi, which is magicians. Right? Moses standing in front of the magicians yeah. through power. 
we're beginning to understand that Yahweh has given us an ability, a capacity to engage in a supernatural way that will change the nations of the world. That will change who you are. That will align you to all that is bringing into solution for who you are as a son and a daughter. But I have to get to the place where I completely and utterly give all of who I am into Him, over Him, and let Him and allow Him to overshadow me. Yes, yes, yes. yes. How are you guys doing? Great. It's His desire for you to understand what it means yeah. to eat Him and drink Him. Now, I know we've probably done this before, but what I want you to do is I'm going to take you into an encounter like I always do. I don't always do this, but I kind of think that tonight is, I want you to take communion, but in the spirit. Yes. Now, everybody knows what it's like to eat something. Anybody has a problem with that? No. They don't understand what it's like to eat something. We do that. <laughs> I think we all kind of know, because we all eat something somehow, somewhere, <laughs> during the day. And if you haven't, God bless you. If you're fasting, this is a good time. Sitting, standing, whatever you're comfortable with. Father, we just want to enter in to your throne room right now. You know what I want you to do is I want you to find yourself in your own warfare. Where you're at in life right now, where the enemy comes against you, where there's constantly war against who you are, whether your finances, whether your physical life, whether your mental state, whether your, your social state, whatever and wherever the attacks in your life is, remind yourself of something Yahweh says. In the midst of what the enemy brings to you, I will set up a table. I will set up a table and you will have a feast in their midst. Yes. <laughs> I like that scripture. I mean, I love that way of warring. Yes. When the enemy comes against you and they want to kill, steal and destroy, and what do I do? I sit in the kingdom of heaven with my father where they cannot even penetrate. They can only see me and they can look at me eat and have a great time with my God. Yes. And then they get defeated. But I want to also remind you, and we've done this already, the angelic hosts are in your camp. They are fighting for you. Can I go face to face with a demon? Yes, I can. But do I want to? No, I don't. It's disgusting. They smell funky. There's an a, a aura around them that I am not to be part of. And I don't live in that domain. When I put my foot down as a spirit being, they all have to go. But by the time I get there, my angelic camp is already dealt with them. A warfare is changing. Why? Because I eat of him and drink of him. I'm one with him. There's a knowing in who I am. Around. And it comes out from the kingdom of heaven into the kingdom of earth. And it literally aligns everything and propels things back into place. And we need to begin to believe it for it to come into full fruition. From that table, I want you to find yourself at the throne room. And I like doing this. I do this all the time. But I just stand before the Father. No, I say the Father, but I mean yod heh vav I stand before the fullness of God, the fullness of Yahweh, and I literally just step into Him. And as I step into Him, now I've gone through a process in my life where I went through a ceremony where I stepped into Him. I, I climbed into Him and we became one. Uh, that was Yeshua. And I want to do the same thing, but it's a little bit different. I stand in Him, and as I stand in Him, I expand my spirit man to all of who He is. And he begins to overshadow me with all his fullness. That's where I begin to understand that as I eat of him, I begin to inhale that life eternal. I begin to understand how God is changing my DNA. I'm embracing transformation. I'm embracing the power of the body and the blood of Yeshua. Allow him. As you're in that spirit realm right now and you step into him, you see the angelic canopy around you. You feel the beauty and the fire and the glory and the presence of Yahweh in and over you as you're standing in him. And these thoughts are going through your mind. He's busy aligning your frequency. He's busy putting you into place that you need to be so that that image of God uh, that you need to be transformed into, you are going through that transformation. You find yourself engaging in the DNA and dimensions of the kingdom is released in you, in your body. And you're beginning to think differently. You begin to understand things differently. You understand that the Father is changing the record of your genes. He's changing the record of your physical um, 
uh, perception of who you physically are. He's aligning you and bringing things back into alignment. Yeah, but I have this big birth defect. It's always been in my family. It's just how it is. Well, see him align it. See him bringing healing to who you are. See him transforming your physical body into a glorified state. Father, come. As we stand before you, everyone in this room has stepped into you, my King. And your fullness, your glory of fire is busy bringing us to an extended state. So our spirit man is beginning to get fuller and fuller and fuller so we can fill up all of who you are, my King. Full image, full likeness of who you are. Begin to understand what it is to walk in different realms and dimensions. And begin to understand what it means to bring spiritual matter into physical, physical realm. And it takes the spiritual and brings it into a physical. We speak life and it physically appears in front of it. There be light and there was light. He created the beasts in the field. The birds in the air, the fish in the sea. And he's given us that same capacity. He's given us that same Dimension of who he is is brooding inside of us as sons and daughters. And I see this in the spirit and I've engaged this in my timeline several times. There'll be a day where sons of God will be doing this stuff. And we will speak into the atmosphere and things will be created into place. Where there is no land, there will be land. I've spoken into place because we have eaten of him. We have drank of him. We have stepped into him and he overshadowed us and changed our DNA. Father, we absolutely glorify and magnify your name. In this state where we are right now, Father, trigger the ability to transform matter and control light and sound. Let's begin to understand that creative ability that you've given us and how we get to function with that in creation. It takes the gift into a whole new place. We don't have to wait until it's uttered by Holy Spirit. Not that it's a problem for us to wait on Holy Spirit. But we look at your ministry and we look at how you did things. And you healed all the sick. You had that ability, that capacity to carry on for hours and hours and hours. And nobody that was in your meeting that was sick didn't get healed. Some might have lost their faith and the sickness came back. But we're beginning to understand you had the capacity to do as you will. When I'm in you, Yahweh, when we live and move and have our being and all of who you are, we are one with you. We are the body. You are the head. You are the governance. We can do nothing without you. We can say nothing without you. Your world becomes my world. My world becomes your world. My word becomes your word. Your word becomes my word. Because it's been transformed. I've been transformed into all of who you are. Father, your desire is for your people to be one with you. Let's begin to understand what it means, what it means for us to eat of you and drink of you. In this place, we're expanding to us as we're expanding into you. That will shadow us with revelation, insight, and knowledge regarding, regarding all of this that has just been released into the atmosphere. We love you. We praise you, Father, in the name of Yeshua. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. It's before you guys. Uh... <laughs>